rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world, and then shall the end come. Tell us, when will these things be, and what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? Well, good afternoon, everybody. I'm Dave Robbins with End Time Ministries, and I want to welcome you to Thursday's edition of End of the Age. Irvin Baxter is traveling this afternoon. I'm filling in for him, and he'll be back on the air with you tomorrow to do um, the, uh, the on-air live edition where you can call in. So I want to thank you for joining me this afternoon. And I've got a very interesting topic that we're going to discuss. It's further moves or precursors to the implementation of the mark of the beast. We're seeing more precursors all the time, but I had some interesting input from uh, some of our listeners and, and a, a pastor friend of ours in New Zealand, a friend in Canada, and then I'm going to kind of go over what's going on here in the United States. Further moves toward the implementation of the mark of the beast around the world or a numbering system for every person on the planet. But let me set the stage here just a little bit to kind of get you thinking this afternoon, to get you out of your lethargic state of driving down the road, or maybe you're doing a plumbing project or working on a construction site, or you're in a cubicle somewhere, or you're picking up one of your children from school. Do you remember the scene in The Wizard of Oz when Dorothy and her friends finally stand before the wizard, this big green head, and they got the throne there, and they are shaking in their shoes. He's yelling at them, and he's got them scared to death. <clears throat> Just about that time, the little dog Toto goes over and pulls open the curtain, pulls it back to reveal the guy behind the curtain, and he makes the famous statement, pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. Well, and he had all their attention up here and he was hoping they didn't see what was going on behind the curtain. Do you ever feel like that's what's going on in our world? I mean, think about it. Everyone focuses on a small protest over here that the news blows up where there might only be a hundred people, but they'll put it across the news and everybody focuses. Oh no, there was another protest. Or maybe a riot over there with of 20 people. Or maybe, uh, and honestly, look at how many people have focused on a couple of movie stars that decided to get a divorce. Everybody focuses on, the, oh no, Brad, uh, Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie are getting a divorce. I can't believe it's happening. Think about it. Everybody gets so engrossed in that stuff. Who's going to win the next football game on Sunday? There's nothing wrong with that, but the problem is, is that you get engrossed in that stuff and you really don't pay attention to what's real, what really matters, and that's what's going on behind the mystical curtain somewhere. And it really involves your life. But as long as I can take it easy on Sunday and, you know, all this stuff's taken care of, I'm okay. I don't have to worry about that, even though they're enslaving me slowly but surely. As long as I'm kind of taken care of and I can pay my bills and this, that, and the other, I'm okay. I'm not really going to resist. I'm just going to let it go. And as long as I can take care of me, myself, and my family, everything's going to be okay. There's nothing wrong with that. The problem is, is there comes a time when somebody needs to say something. You need to understand What's going on in the world? The enslavement of society. Recently, I was teaching one of my Bible studies here at the End Time Television Studios on the Mark of the Beast. You all know the Mark of the Beast, Revelation 13, 16 through 17 states, And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, 
They're going to economically sanction you to get you to conform to the edicts of the Antichrist and the one world government. Well, at the end of the Bible study, I have an actual RFID chip injector. I'm holding it in my hand for those of you that are listening on the radio. It has an actual RFID chip in it. And at the end of each at the end of that particular Bible study, I try to get someone to come up and let me put a chip to inject this chip into them. But the problem is, for some reason, nobody has ever wanted to let me actually do that. I wonder why. Maybe because they've listened to End Time Ministries for so long and they know the ramifications of that. I would never, ever let anybody put a mark of identification on my person ever. Well, one of the points to the lesson is that precursors to the system of the mark of the beast are being implemented all around the world. But people aren't paying attention because they're so caught up in uh, being in, in entertainment and what the news media is feeding them that they're not really, they can't see through all the fog to understand what's really going on in the world. They just don't see it. For instance, how many of you lately received a new debit card with a chip on the front? Was it optional? No, it wasn't optional. I, I talked on my Bible study about this here at the studios, and I asked them, was, it, was, your, was any of your, they all had received the new debit card, but it wasn't optional. So I got on my Texans credit union, and on the Texans credit union, I wanted to know, what's this chip for? Why is this chip on my card? And it said, that the question was on there, why does my debit card now include a chip? And it stated on my Texans credit union, and I'm quoting, as chip technology will soon become the security standard in the U.S. I'm going to say that again. As chip technology will soon become the security standard in the U.S. So they're looking to chips. All your new passports have chips on them. All your debit cards have chips on them because it's becoming the security standard in the U.S. Many merchants are beginning to accept chip cards. You all have been there and made purchases. You know what I'm talking about. And the banks want you to be ready. The question is, was it optional? No. You received it in the mail. That was it. The question was on, my, on the, the uh, Texans Credit Union website. Can I use my old card after I receive the new EMV chip debit card? The answer, no. Your old card will be closed approximately 30 days after your new EMV chip debit card is issued. And so you didn't have a choice. They sent me my card and said, hey, Dave, in 30 days, you're going to have to cut your card up because you won't even be able to use that card to get your money. You're going to use this new card with a chip on it. So it was not even an option. Now, I'm not talking about North Korea. I'm not talking about China or India. I'm talking about the United States of America. They just decided that my debit card needed a chip on it. Why? Because remember what I just told you, the chip is becoming the security standard in the United States. So one of the reasons that prompted me to do this uh, program was that I received an email from a pastor friend of mine in New Zealand. And I'm going to read you verbatim from the email because it's, it's, it's very clear what's going on around the world. Now, I know that this is going on all over the world, but I wanted you to read an email correspondence that I got from this pastor friend of mine. He says, hi, Dave, just some info on how we here in New Zealand are being forced into having a biometric ID account. It's called the real me. Very close to your own country's real ID. You've heard of the real ID here in the United States. He's saying this is very close to that being rolled out here in the United States. It's rolled out in New Zealand, except theirs has already has been implemented. He states that the mark of the beast is ramping up throughout the world, and we have, uh, we have been told that we have no choice. Well, I replied, thank you very much for the information, Gary. Uh, I've heard something about New Zealand implementing such a system from other friends that I have in New Zealand, but have not fully researched it. However, it looks like I'm going to have to. Well, he replied back and he said, hey, Dave, just a follow-up to my recent email on the national ID for New Zealand. 
I received an email just this morning from our government department with that details with the yearly renewal of our celebrant's license. Celebrant would be like a, a pastor or a minister. He's a minister, so he has to renew his minister's license every year. And he says that they had, they, they, he, he received an a, a email from his government uh, concerning his yearly renewal of his pastor's license. And they stated that now when renewing your license, it can only be done after I have registered and obtained a real me ID. He says that this will affect all licensed ministers here in New Zealand, including myself. He says it's very subtle on how the one world system is in introducing these measures of control. I said, Gary, would you be so kind as to forward me that email, the email from your government uh, stating that you have to have this card or this national ID to renew your minister's license? He said, hey, no problem, Dave, here it is. I'm going to read to you exactly what this says because there could be a time in the near future when the pastors here in the United States have to do this because they're implementing the real ID. Right now they're saying it's an enhanced license, but it could turn into this before very long. He says, hey Dave, the section of interest is 2017, the celebrant or the minister's renewal and real me. And it states, the annual minister's renewal is just around the corner. This year, the renewal will follow the same online process that most of you are now familiar with. The key renew renewal dates are as follows, and it gives the dates. Uh, and, then he and then it says, the online renewal process for independent pastors and ministers is as follows. Click on the link in your renewal email, which he was sent, and follow the prompts to log in with your real me username and password. Remember, it's it got to have this national ID, this real me. The online renewal process for the organizational celebrants or the pastors is as follows. Log in with your real me username and password. If you have not previously applied or renewed online, please ensure that you have a real me verified identity before the renewal process even starts. Don't if you don't have a real I me uh, what happens if you don't have a real me verified identity? Go to www.realme.gov.nz to create a real me login and submit an application to, to have your identity verified. You will be emailed an application number. Take this into a participating New Zealand post shop to have your photo taken and linked to your real me login. Similar to our other services, a, now get this, a real me verified identity is absolutely needed to access the new online services. Real me, New Zealand's, now this is from the government, sent him uh, on his minister's renewal. The, the real me, New Zealand's biometric identification system in the global ID rollout. Now think about that. This is, the, this is an article that he sent me. And it says the, 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 the identification system, this national identification system in the global ID rollout. Now listen, this is an article that he sent me and I want you to hear how specific that they've been. It states a national identification system is currently being rolled out, this, um, rolled out that is called the real me. Now this is New Zealand. In the United States, it's real ID. And it says it was launched last year, and the real me, it is a uh, partnership between the New Zealand government and the New Zealand Post. It uses biometric verification technology, and it boasts world-first capability in identity verification. It came about as a result of the AML CFT created after the 911 attack. So they created this after the 911 attack, and it's being implemented in New Zealand. Now, can you figure that one out? Well, it's because it's global. It's a global uh, a, uh, ID that they're setting up. Realme has a non-verified and verified account status. Verify will require you to go into the New Zealand Post and have a biometric ID photo taken. Once they have that, you are in the net and there is no escape. You can't go in there and simply, oh, I don't want to be a part of this anymore. It doesn't work like that. 
The data is owned and controlled by the government. And get this, it is shared globally. To everybody who implements a this system, it's shared globally. In the early days, it said Real Me was voluntary on the website. But they have removed that since. And at this point, a verified account is, is voluntary, but they're fixing to make it mandatory as of next year, 2017, which is what Gary was telling me about. He said, but that's about to change. Anyone with a limited liability company has a Real Me account set up automatically by the government. Anyone wanting to deal with the government in any way will have a Real Me account. This currently includes passport applications, applications for student loans and allowances. It will include the IRD, WINZ, the driver's licensing, and the big banks. They're all now pushing for it. The government also announced today that the next census will be done online. So imagine going in and filling out your census form. In America, they give it to you physically. But then in uh, next year in New Zealand, they can do it online. And it states, you will need a real me account and an ID for, filing, for filling out your census form from now on. Real me is no difference to the real ID. Now, I want you to remember this because I'm going to cover the real ID here in a minute. The real me in New Zealand is no different to the real ID system being rolled out in America. The names are almost identical. You say, well, hold on a minute. That's okay if it's in New Zealand. But what, here in the United States, no, 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 no. We're not going to settle for that. Well, there's a lot of states that it's already fully implemented in here in the United States. And I'm going to talk to you about that probably in the second part of the program. So it go, the article goes on to state, according to the information I have, I've been given about this, the same crowd that created the UIDAI in India are behind Real Me. Now you realize India has over a billion people. And it states that over 90% 90 90 of the Indian population in India has a biometric ID in that system. They sold it originally as verifying you so the Indian public could vote. That's how they got them set up for the system. Once they got information in there, there's no opting out. They set up, hey, come and, come and, and do this, register to vote. Then they gave, they gave them this national ID, and now there's no opting out of it. Other laws and systems connected to this system include AML CFT. You say, well, what's that? Well, it's a AML is anti-money laundering, and the CFT is combating the financing of terrorism. So this is what they're putting it under the guise of after the 911, and it says, um, and the financial intelligence units say that this is going to be institu in, um, instituted globally. So you say, well, how is it going to be done globally? Well, the, the Go AML, G-O-A-M-L, is a new global AML reporting standard adopted by the United Nations office, the world governing office, on drugs and crime that regulators around the world, not just in New Zealand, but around the world, will increasingly implement to combat terrorist financing and money laundering by organized crime. Get this, it is all linked together. If you are involved in a financial transaction that is deemed suspicious or unusual, it is automatically entered into the United Nations controlled system called GoAML. Your bank is required to do it by law. And any financial service provider you deal with has to do it as well. They don't need to tell you this. If you have a bank account, your bank has been required to do an AML CFT assessment of you. So look at what's going on. It's, uh, Gary, a, friend, a pastor friend of ours in New Zealand, emailed me and said, Dave, you've got to check this out. Next year, I'm going to be given a national ID card, and I've got to have that to even get my minister's license renewed. And now he's telling me that, um, and, and so he sends me this article explaining it. Well, I find out that this thing is, is global and that this real me in New Zealand is not much different from the real ID being implemented here in the United States. So I'm getting there scratching my head going, 
you've got this this thing's so, a lot farther than what we're than what we even thought it was. And if you're just sitting there. Uh, just going out through life, not worrying about stuff, just kind of floating along. There's a noose that is slowly being placed around your neck and tightened up. That's exactly what they're doing. So you, I, I want to break you out of that complacency and say, listen, this is happening. Talk to your governors, your, your congressmen, your senators. You don't want this implemented. Many states, when the real ID here in the United States uh, was rolled out, they passed laws against it. But unbeknownst to the people in the state, they started implementing it anyway, even though they had passed laws against it. Think about that. Do your research. You'll see what I'm saying is true. And so I'm going to talk about the real ID here in a minute. But before we get to the bottom of the hour, I want to make sure that I cover one more email that was sent in by a friend of mine in Canada, just north of the border. The email states he, he heard a recent program uh, that we talk, we've talked about several times about the national IDs and all these different things. And he sent me an email and he says, hello, Dave, the Canadian governments, both federal and provincial, are slowly implementing a national ID here in Canada. First, it was uh, the updated driver's license with a photo. Now, that's with a, in a digital signature, etc. So an enhanced driver's license. Well, that's what they say the real ID is here in the United States. Just an enhanced driver's license. But um, the, my Canadian friend goes on to state, and a strip with the unknown information on that strip. The enhanced version can be used also as a passport. He says that I'm sure even with uh, more embedded info, uh, that this means the bulk of the population has a virtual national ID as any police officer would have access to all of that info, and eventually they will state that it is too expensive to have two types of licenses and will go with just the enhanced license. It's only a matter of time. But what about the people who do not drive or are suspended from driving? What do they do about them? Well, he states, it gets, uh, get, he says, get this, Dave. In Canada, we have socialized health care. Everyone who wants free health services has to apply for a health card. It's called the Manitoba Health Card. Each province would probably have their own. He goes on to state that this was a simple process and an individual was issued a non-picture health card, which was considered by some a form of ID. Now he's talking about just in the, in the, in the uh, recent history here and a form of ID, but not anymore, he states. Going forward, Here's what's coming. You'll have to go to a motor vehicles outlet. Now, the, a, mo, a, a DMV outlet to get your health card. And then it also says that in this, and I went, so I, I thought, man, I better check this out. The Manitoba health card. So I went and looked and it says on this, your personal health identification number on Manitoba health. The P-H-I-N is a mandatory, the, get that word mandatory. It's not voluntary. It's mandatory field on all claims. It is mandatory, this national ID. If the national ID is not correctly entered on the claim, it will be rejected. To get this card, you go through the same process as receiving a driver's license. Now, 99.9% .9 of the population will be covered and have a national ID. And if you can believe this, get this, Dave. When the media asked the government spokesperson why they were taking this initiative, they responded by saying that they wanted to help reduce clutter in people's wallets. That's how they tried to sell it to the people of Canada. Well, we really just want, that was the answer they got. Why are you doing, go to the government, why are you doing this? And they said, we're trying to reduce clutter in people's wallets. That's the answer they gave. We're going to implement a national ID on you. You have to have that to get health care. And we're just trying to keep your wallet from being cluttered. I mean, they, they, they must think these Canadians don't have a brain. I assure you that they do. But uh, maybe, it's, maybe it's the other way around. I don't know. One last thing, my, my friend says from Canada. One last thing. If I went to your state of Texas, 
one swipe by a Texas police officer would be able to retrieve all info on my license and vice versa. So these ID are actually international IDs. Now, folks, the, the, what he's saying is true. I went and looked it up. And this sounds very similar to the Real ID Act that the U.S. government is trying to establish here in the United States. It's very, very similar. And so let, let me sum it up before we get to the bottom of the hour because I know that I'll lose some of you uh, because on the radio we're only on a lot of stations for just 30 minutes. So let me sum it up real quick. The Bible says that just prior to the second coming of Jesus Christ, there's going to be a world government established. And that world government is going to give everybody on earth, it's going to actually take over a system that's already being set up where everybody on earth will be given their own unique identification number. Why are they doing that? So they can control you. It's not just because they need something else to do. It's all going to end up being under the guise, uh, uh, under, under the guise of, hey, we just want to have this. But it's all, it's all about control at the end of the day. The Bible says, Revelation chapter 13, verse 16 through and 17, that everyone on earth will be given an, a number, a mark in their right hand or in their forehead. And without that, you're going to need that to function in society. And without that, you're not going to be able to buy or sell. You're not going to be able to purchase insurance or buy a car, buy gas, anything. And you're not going to be able to sell anything. And so it's going to be hard for you to participate in society without that number. But we're, what we're, the reason I'm doing the program today is because I want to shake you out of your lethargic state because the system's already being set up in many ways all around the world. And so I want to make sure that you know that we want to... For the first 240 years of this nation, we've resisted it. And we need to continue to resist that here in the United States. Our brand new series has arrived from here to Armageddon. In this eight lesson series, Irvin Baxter will outline the exciting events recorded in the Bible that tell what will happen between now and the second coming of Jesus Christ. He will explain the prophecies that will lead to the greatest revival the world has ever known and how you can be a part of it. Call 1-800-END-TIME or go to endtime.com to get your copy of From Here to Armageddon. When current events are found in Bible prophecy, it's astonishing. At End Time Ministries, we are seeing them unfold every day, and so can you. We've put together a current events in Bible prophecy package for anyone who wants to understand like never before. Irvin Baxter and his dedicated staff have spent hundreds of hours of research and study, and in doing so have discovered that current events and Bible prophecy are telling the same story. This series includes lessons such as, When Will the Rapture Happen?, Master Plan of the Dragon?, Israel's Future According to Bible Prophecy?, Signposts of the Second Coming?, Refuting Preterism?, and To Sabbath or Not to Sabbath? These 13 DVDs will prepare you for this extraordinary time that God has destined you to live. Call 1-800-END-TIME or go to endtime.com and save over 30% when you buy the current events in Bible Prophecy Package. If your radio station only carries the first 30 minutes of End of the Age, go to endtime.com and click the watch button to continue today's broadcast. You can also finish up later by clicking the archives button. Welcome back, everybody. And we're talking today about precursors to the Mark of the Beast system that will eventually be used by the Antichrist to cause everybody on earth to conform to his edicts, to bow down, to pledge allegiance to him. You know, once you get a hold of somebody's pocketbook, you can pretty much, it's, it's pretty easy to control somebody. Hey, you, you owe me this money. Nope, you can't buy or sell unless you do this. Think about it. Put yourself in that situation in the next few years. What are you going to do when the government says, pledge allegiance to this one world governing body and me, the Antichrist, this one world governing body, 
all around the world, pledge allegiance to me and my one world government, or I'm going to invalidate your number and you won't be able to function in society. You say, well, that, that may not happen here. Well, if, if we pull out of the United Nations and America doesn't participate in that, in the end time, that's possible. It couldn't happen here. And there will be pockets of resistance around the world. But most of the world is going to follow after this and, and have, the, have to make a decision. Do I put this mark in my hand or in my forehead? The Bible says everyone whose name is not written in the Lamb's Book of Life will do it. Because you're not going to put your trust in God to take you through that time. You're going to rely on a physical solution, which will be the mark of the beast. Hey, the only way I can eat is to take the mark of the beast. Think about it. And I, I wouldn't wait till then to make the decision. I'd make the decision now. I'm never going to do that. I don't care what happens. That is not going to happen. I'm never going to take a mark of identification on my person. And I'm never going to pledge allegiance to the Antichrist or his one world governing system. You, can, you absolutely cannot do that. The ramifications of that are of eternal consequence. The Bible says you do that, you take the mark of the beast, and it's eternal damnation. The Bible's very clear on that. It's mentioned several times in the book of Revelation. So you absolutely cannot do that. But what I'm trying to do today is to say, listen, folks, it, we're watching precursors right now. In the first part of the program, I went over two emails from friends of mine, one in Canada, one in New Zealand, about how it's being implemented there. You say, well, I have, now hold on a minute, Dave. That, you know, there would never be a national ID implemented here. Well, I've got to rely on a number to function in society. Okay. Well, let me ask you this. Let's take your social security number right now. Social security number. Can you get a bank loan without a social security number? The answer I can tell you is no. Can you buy a car? No, you can't because you can't get it registered. You can't get licensed for it. You can pay cash to your grandpa for one, sure, but you'll never be able to get licensed for it unless you got a social security number. Can you get uh, a home loan? No, can't do that. Can you have a job? Unless it's a cash paying job mowing yards, if you're going to work for somebody and you're going to pay taxes and this, that, and the other, you have to have a social security number. So think about it. You ha and you to, to set up a bank account, you have to have a social security number. They want your number for everything to function in society as a rule. Now, you can go live off the grid and do all that if you want to. But if you're going to function in society right now in America, you've got to have a social security number. Well, what happens if in the near future, this world governing system, they say, we're going to invalidate your social security number unless you comply with us, with our ideologies, our belief system. Uh, you're going to pledge allegiance to me, this antichrist, this one world governing dictator. What are you going to do? Think about it. Because it's something you need to think about because the Bible says it's going to happen in the near future. So it's something we need to think about. And we'll talk about, you know, and, and I've had met so many people say, well, hey, during the time of the tribulation, how are we going to survive? I tell them we're at least we know from the prophecies of the Bible, we're, th we're at least three and a half years from that time. That would be like asking me, Dave, what's the stock market going to be in three and a half years? It's impossible. But I tell everybody when we get a little closer to that time, we'll be able to give everybody more direction on what to do. Right now, at this point, we're just we're going to rely on God. We've done that for years. That's how we function here. We rely on God and He supplies our needs. And consequently, that's what we're going to have to do during that time. But if you're not relying upon God, if you say, well, hey, I, you know, I'm just going to handle this myself physically and I'm going to do, you know, I'm going to I'm going to work harder and I'm going to this, that and the other. No, that's going to be taken away. And so you need to really think about it and just make up in your mind, no matter what happens, I don't care how bad it gets. I'm not taking the mark of the beast. Now, in the first part of the program, we talked about New Zealand. We talked about Canada. Our question in the United States here is, what about us? Well, let's talk about it. There's an article 
that we wrote in End Time magazine here just a while back, and it said, America gets a national ID October 1, 2020. So listen at the article. I want to go through this because it's very, very important that you understand what's going on here in the United States. And then if I have time, I'll talk to you about what's going on in Alaska and give you some states that have not complied with the Real ID system as we speak. So on May 13th, I'm going to take you back and do a little history, and then I'll bring you up to today. On May 13th, 1997, Stephen Moore, an economist at the Cato Institute, testified before the Judiciary Committee of the, House of, of the U.S. House of Representatives Subcommittee on Immigration and Claims concerning the establishment of a national identification system. I'm talking about the United States here, everybody. He reminded the committee what happened when a national ID was proposed during a cabinet meeting of the Reagan administration in 1981. Then Attorney General William French Smith argued that a perfectly harmless ID card system would be necessary to reduce illegal immigration. A second cabinet member asked, well, why not tattoo a number on each American's forearm? Well, according to Martin Anderson, the White House domestic policy advisor at the time, R Ronald Reagan, who was a, uh, a student of the Book of Revelation, he actually blurted out, and this is in the congressional record, my God, that's the mark of the beast. Well, as Anderson wrote, that was the end of the national identification card during the Reagan years. I wish we had another president like that. Moving on. Most Republican politicians today seem to be bending over backwards to cloak themselves in the Ronald Reagan mantle. Yet some of those same politicians are strong proponents of the national ID card called the real ID. Well, shouldn't we at least pause a moment to consider the wisdom of one of America's greatest presidents ever? I know that as soon as you start quoting the Bible, some politicians immediately begin to stammer and backpedal. They don't know how to deal with the Word of God because it's been pulled from our society. God forbid that anyone should actually take the Bible seriously. And God forbid anyone would believe a 2,000-year-old prophecy foretelling a time when a person would need a number or an ID card in order to hold a job, enabling the person to buy or sell. Well, how uneducated could you possibly be? But let's humor President Reagan for a moment. What was the biblical basis that caused him to say, my God, that's the mark of the beast? Remember, I told you he was a student of the book of Revelation. But the prophecy he read and he's talking about is found in Revelation 13, verse 16 and 17. It says, and he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. This 13th chapter of Revelation describes the world as it will be three and a half years before the battle of Armageddon and the second coming of Jesus Christ. It's the length of the great tribulation, three and a half years. In Revelation 13, verses 1 through 8 describe a world government that will be in power at that time. And we've talked about it. I talked about it yesterday uh, with Obama uh, promoting the world government in his speech at the UN. Verse, it's the same world government that was prophesied 2,000 years ago. Verses 11 through 14 of Revelation 13 foretell a global belief system, or we would refer to it as the world religion, that will be put in place to support the world government and to prevent war. The economic system described in verses 16 and 17, or the mark of the beast, will be used to force the people of the world to submit to the control of the world system. If a person refuses to submit to the world government and its interfaith ideology, the individual will not be permitted to hold a job. It will simply be economic sanctions, the favorite tool of the world community, enforcing compliance to its edicts on an individual level. Well, Ronald Reagan was a student of the prophecies of the Bible and was obviously well aware of the mark of the beast prophecy. So let's be very serious for a moment. We're watching the emergence of a system of world government or global governance right now. After all, we're being continually indoctrinated, 
concerning the necessity of the virtues of globalization. We already have a World Bank, the International Monetary Fund, the World Trade Organization, the World Health Organization, the World Court, and of course the United Nations. The terms world community, international community, roll effortlessly off of our tongues, almost without even thinking about it. It's in the news every day. Somehow we have become very accustomed to such radical statements as President George W. Bush saying, Muslims, Jews, and Christians all worship the same God and that all three religions are equally valid. But it doesn't shock us anymore when President Obama chooses Muslims, Jews, homosexuals, and evangelicals to pray at our nation's inaugural services. It seems perfectly normal when former British Prime Minister Tony Blair establishes the Tony Blair Faith Foundation and lectures on faith and globalization at Yale University. The new philosophy of religious inclusiveness is progressing very nicely. So let's talk about the United States on the brink of a national ID. The 2000 year old prophecy states a time will come when people on the earth will be given a number and without that number, they're not gonna be able to buy or sell. First, such a system has never been possible in all of history until right now. Only with the invention of the computer and the birth of the internet could this prophecy be fulfilled. So I wonder how the writer of Revelation, John, knew to predict such a system way back in 96 AD. Well, of course he was inspired by God. God's already seen all these events played out, told John what to write. Secondly, just such a system is being implemented in the United States and in most other countries on earth right now. We already talked about New Zealand and Canada, and I, I, could, I could list them all really for you. Uh, around the world. The final deadline for enforcement of a national ID card in America is October 1, 2020. But wait, can any intelligent person seriously believe the prophecies of the Bible written 2,000 years ago? They're actually going to come to pass right now? Well, according to a poll conducted by Time and CNN, 59% of all Americans believe the prophecies in the book of Revelation will come to pass and 20% believe that they will be fulfilled in our lifetime. So it's obvious that President Reagan believed it and nixed the idea of a national ID before it could get any traction during his administration. Now, when we get back, I'll talk about is the real ID card the mark of the beast? That's what we're all interested in. We're gonna answer that question when we come back from the break. What an incredibly important subject we have today, Islam in Bible prophecy. It hasn't been many years since those planes flew into the trade towers in New York City, and suddenly the attention of the world was riveted on this religion, Islam, that very few of us knew very much about. But if you had to guess the religion of a suicide bomber, what religion would you guess? Now, could this religion, this huge religion, be totally absent from the prophecies of the Bible? We're gonna find out today, it's not true. Islam is in your Bible. To order our DVDs, Islam in Bible Prophecy, and Will Islam Rule the World? Call 1-800-END-TIME or go to endtime.com. So we've talked about a national ID being implemented here in the United States. And the question is, is the real ID card the mark of the beast? Well, the real ID is not the mark of the beast system yet. It's, the, it's part of the system, but it's not the actual taking of the mark of the beast. However, it is establishing a system that could be used to implement the mark of the beast as soon as the prophesied world government fully comes into power. It's what they'll use. They'll use this system that's already set up around the world, everybody having their own unique identification number, to then fully implement the mark of the beast. 
You say, well, can it be stopped if it's already prophesied? Well, the mark of the beast is going to be implemented because a lot of people have called us and said, hey, if it's, if it's prophesied, it's going to happen. Why do you guys even resist it? Well, it's going to be implemented. We know that. And it's going to be implemented as an enforcement mechanism in the coming one world government. However, there will be some nations in dissent who will not comply with the system of global governance. It is possible that the United States could be one of the opposing nations. It's very possible. We've taught that for years. We believe that we'll, we believe that we're going to pull out of the United Nations, pull out of the world governing body and stand with Israel all the way to the second coming of Jesus Christ. And I still believe that. I believe we can prove that scripturally. So you say, well, what, what should be done about the Real ID? Well, the Real ID Act should be repealed. It's a law. We need to repeal it. And all other forms of a national ID should be permanently outlawed. Not only is the numbering of human beings prophesied in the Bible, but also a national ID is the critical tool that allows a totalitarian government to exercise total control over its citizens. Ask Adolf Hitler why he numbered the Jews. Ask Ronald Reagan. Ask and ask, obviously, ask our forefathers that have adamantly refused the adoption of a national ID for the last 240 years. Now, before, before I get done, before I dive off into what's going on in Alaska, I want to give a final note to senators and congressmen because I know that a lot of them will listen, listen uh, obviously would listen to our program and they'll watch us on TV and they get our magazine. Lawmakers, let me tell you, we are depending upon you. Please do not be intimidated by those who say we must have a national ID to stop illegal immigration. They're talking about it right now. It was, it, they talked about it in Ronald Reagan's era. They're talking about it right now. Illegal immigration. We've got to have a national ID. Don't be influenced by those who are determined to bring the American people under their control. Please do the right thing. Be strong and very courageous. Preserve individual liberty. Repeal the real ID. And do not approve the mandatory use of E-Verify. If you're not successful in repealing real ID, make sure that your state refuses to comply. This numbering system of control must be stopped at all cost. Please don't forget, control and freedom are opposite terms. America has gotten along without a national ID for 240 years, and we don't need one now. Remember, no national ID, not now, not ever, in any form. We're counting on you, our senators, our congressmen. Repeal this law. And we're also praying for you. It's very, very important. We don't want that here in the United States. Now, let's talk about what's going on in Alaska. Because a lot of people, it's like a fog. They're trying to see through all this stuff that's going on. And you really can't see, hey, what's going on right now? Tell me, Dave. Well... Alaska and other states, they, are, they just got a 90-day extension. Now, it's, it was passed in 2005 by George Bush. It's been delayed uh, or postponed several times because a lot of states pass laws against it right off the bat. Well, Alaska is still asking for extensions because they passed a law against it originally. So Alaska just got another 90-day extension for Real ID rules. The deadline has now been pushed back 90 days from October 10 to January 9th. And you say, well, how in the, what's going on? Well, in Fort Wainwright, which is a United States Army post in Alaska, it announced Thursday that the Department of Homeland Security has delayed the deadline for Alaska and other states with non-compliant identification cards. Drivers with licenses from non-compliant states, I'm talking about the United States now, uh, they now have more time to acquire additional identification to gain access to Fort Wayne, Rainwright uh, should the states not meet the new January 9th deadline. So access to this Army base, which is obviously federal. Starting next month in Alaska, driver's licenses won't count as a valid identification uh, means to enter Fort Wainwright to visit or see your family or whatever and some other federal facilities unless Alaska receives another waiver. 
Like most states and territories in the United States, Alaska's state issues identification cards don't comply with the federal Real ID Act of 2005. Your driver's license won't count anymore. Alaska as a federal ID. Alaska's IDs now are scheduled to be invalid for entering federal installations as of October 10 and invalid for airport checkpoints in January of 2018, just a little over a year away. The Department of Homeland Security has delayed the law's implementation several times, most recently granting Alaska a waiver in 2015. Alaska is one of the 28 states and territories whose IDs won't be valid for federal facilities, including military bases and courthouses on October 10. Now, one of many states, not just Alaska. Alaska has applied for another waiver, but state leaders aren't counting on getting it. Alaska Department of Administration spokeswoman Minta Montalbo said Tuesday that the department is in charge of identification cards through the Division of Motor Vehicles. And there we go again. Remember in Canada, they passed that through the, the Division of Motor Vehicles to get their health card? Well, the real ID is being passed as an enhanced driver's license through the Division of Motor Vehicles, the DMV. And it goes on to state that it will be difficult to get the waiver this time, so we're advising people who need to access the military bases that they should consult whatever federal facility they are trying to access about what kind of identification will be required. You see how controlling it is? You can't even enter a federal building in the near future without this Real ID. The Real ID Act formalized, and imagine if your family member is in this military base. You wouldn't even be able to get in to see them if you, unless you had this ID number, or the ID card. So the Real ID Act formalized security rules recommended by the National Commission on Terrorist Attacks and it was also known as the 911 Commission. The law is unpopular with privacy advocates, which is myself, who argue the ID card requirements move the United States toward a centralized national ID card system. The Alaska legislature put the state on a collision course with the federal law in 2008 by passing a bill that prohibits the state from spending money to get into compliance. Then Governor Sarah Palin signed that bill into law. The law has kept the state from fulfilling the Real ID Act's requirements to this point. To do this nationally mandated verification process, we would have to better ourselves or better, to have better software and better digital cameras, Montalbo said. We are not allowed to spend money for these things because we've gone as far as we can and we, are, we were warned by the federal government that it's not guaranteed that we'll get an extension. Now, proposed legislation could ease the restrictions from the 2008 law by allowing the state to produce Real ID compliant cards for those who want them. Governor, uh, Alaskan Governor Bill Walker plans to ask the legislature next year to let the state make two types of ID cards. The intent with the governor's legislation is to offer Alaskans a real choice. Those who want the real ID and are comfortable with it and get it, and those who either don't need it or don't want to, and, and are not comfortable and, uh, it doesn't, and they don't have to. That's, in, that's what they're gonna ask for. Well, Fort Rain, Wainwright, this military base in Alaska, it sent out a news release Tuesday that uh, lists all the states and territories that will have non-compliant identifications on October 10th, just here in another week or two. At Fort Wainwright, people from non-compliant states can use other forms of identification, including Department of Defense ID cards and passports. People with uh, non-compliant state IDs on October 10th will not be allowed on the post without a military, military escort unless they have an alternative, an alternate valid form of identification. So I'm going to give you the list of the states. Let's see if your state is included. These are the non-compliant states and territories as of October 10th. Unless your state gets an extension, these are the non-compliant states as of October 10th. It's Alaska, Arkansas, California, Guam, Idaho, Illinois, Kentucky, 
Louisiana, Maine, Massachusetts, Michigan, Montana, Northern Marianas Islands, New Hampshire, New Jersey, New Mexico, New York, North Carolina, North Dakota, Oklahoma, Oregon, Pennsylvania, Puerto Rico, Rhode Island, South Carolina, good old Texas, Virginia, and the U.S. Virgin Islands, and the states and territories of American Samoa, Missouri, Minnesota, and Washington have been out of compliance since earlier this year. In other words, their deadline's already come and gone. Though both Minnesota and Washington offer optional enhanced driver's license cards that do fulfill real ID requirements. Now, I'm, I have to tell you, though, that some states, even though they pass laws against it, they've still went ahead and many of them have met the 18 requirements that are needed to fulfill the real ID laws. So even though they've said on their books, they've said, ah, we're non-compliant, they've went ahead and implemented all 18 things. And so there's full compliance that is that they're trying to implement the whole thing, full compliance by every state in the year 2020, the final rollout where your existing driver's license no more valid. You have to have a real ID here in the United States. Now, it was signed on into law by George W. Bush in 2005. And because so many people resisted it, we started writing letters and doing programs and different things saying, we don't want this. Let's repeal it. And what they did, rather than repeal it, they started just postponing it. Well, all the states aren't complying yet. We'll just postpone well, it took a little bit too much. It took too much money for them to comply. Let's just postpone it. So it's been postponed several times, like five, six, seven times up to this point. And now it's put off until final implementation date, the year 2020. And so what are we talking about here? We're not just talking about implementation of national IDs around the world. Sure, the United States is one of the last great holdouts. But through this Real ID Act, it would become a national ID card for us. That's why many of the states have resisted, resisted, resisted. We here at End Time Ministries have resisted it. We started writing articles and we got response back from senators and different people. And so that's what we want to, we want to see done. We want to see the Real ID Act repealed. We, don't, we absolutely do not want a national ID system here in the United States of America. Because remember, control and freedom are totally opposite terms. And we signed a declaration of independence so we could be a free people. is a production of End Time Ministries. This broadcast will be available on our website, endtime.com, in the archive section. On our website, you'll also find more information about how current events are fulfilling Bible prophecy. To reach our operators, call 1-800-END-TIME. That's 1-800-363-8463. End Time Ministries is partner-supported. We would like to say thank you to our partners who made this broadcast possible. To do what Matthew 24, 14 said, to reach the world with the gospel of the kingdom.